Hey everyone, Jurassic Toys 2000 here. Today we're going to be continuing our look at the Jurassic World toy line and we are looking at the Basher Biter Spinosaurus. This goofy looking creature somewhat resembles a Spinosaurid. We're going to continue this review, but first, let's unpackage it. So here's the figure out of the packaging, and as you can see, this figure is just one of several examples in the Jurassic World toy line where the prototype is better than the toy in hand. Everyone of course can see why. But moving forward, let's look at articulation. Articulation in the arms, they cannot go 360. I mean, I, I wouldn't want them to any... Oh. Well, this is a treat. The right arm can go 360. But the left arm can't because it's hindered by the uh, mold in the body. Articulation in the legs. The legs can't go 360. They just go forward and back and... Yeah. That. Now let's look at detail. Starting off with the head, this thing... It just looks mad. Some of the teeth look like they've been ripped out and just nubs. And... Jeez, just... This just blows my mind, really, uh, how they could do this. Looking inside the mouth, you can see where the uh, pinkness on the inside just stops, and then there's the green where the joint is. Kind of disappointing. But uh, even though there's a seam line up there, you can see they sort of sculpted the mouth, I think. And we got a little bit of a tongue, which uh, seems to look like it stopped short. Looking at the figure head on, oh, jeez, th this thing is just weird. You can see some some wrinkles and uh, scale detail along here. You could, there's the nostril right there. One thing I really do like are the eyes. The eyes are pretty neat. The same folds in the skin continued down the neck into the torso, and here we have a big gash on the side, which is the down damage. Looking at the arms, they're kind of scrawny. The uh, index fingers appear to be much larger. This is actually pretty accurate because Spinosaurus had a big claw on the index finger. Not really shown here. Kind of wish they made the finger claw a little larger, but what can you do? Moving down to the legs, here you can see the conjoined JW mark. Pretty muscular legs, and then they end in these long talons. On the sail, we see some folds in there and even some claw marks. So, seems to me like this Spinosaur got into one heck of a battle. When I was taking it out of the package, I saw that there was these black marks that looked like a Sharpie pen was gone over it. Kind of disappointing, but I'm not really too pissed about it. Details continued down the tail, which is really kind of bland and has really no other colors. Right here is the uh, serial number and trademark information. And the same detail continues on the other side, but is once again diminished by the appearance of screw holes. Three this time. I think this is the uh, least amount of screw holes that we've seen on a figure. This figure is primarily a sickly green color with some orange and brown textures thrown in. A rather weird combination of colors, I must say. At least this time, Hasbro had the decency to paint the toe and finger claws, so that's one thing I can give to them. Like all other Basher Biter figures, the Spinosaurus has an action feature. Pulling the tail downwards will make the head swing up and down. Turning the tail to the left will make the head cock and the jaws open. Now for a size comparison, let's bring in the Basher Biter Tyrannosaurus Rex, which has already been reviewed, and they scale up pretty well. But as you can see, the T-Rex isn't too thrilled to see his old adversary once more. Hello darkness, my old friend. Next, let's bring in the chomping T-Rex. <laughs> Next up, let's bring in Alan Grant. Whoop, sorry. And Alan scales up pretty nicely with the figure. Kind of makes the Spinosaur look like a juvenile. 
And finally, let's bring in the vastly superior Aqua Spinosaurus from Wave 2 of Jurassic Park 3. And Aqua does not like what she can see. A rating for this figure would be a 2.5 out of 10. This figure is... <sighs> this is just... This is almost very... This is difficult to explain. I can't tell if it's good or bad. I mean, this figure, while it has some pretty neat action features and details, the proportions are just bizarre. The color combinations are just as weird, and the open dino damage wound makes the thing look like a zombie. You might say I'm critiquing this figure too much, but it's hard not to. Alright guys, that's my review. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, stay tuned for more.